according to John chapter 13. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that he had tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, although not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he'd washed their feet and had put his robe on and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I've done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example you, that you also should do as I have done to you. Truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he'd come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water in a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. This is shocking. All of this is shocking. Why didn't they wash their own feet when they came into the room? Why did Jesus get up from the table? Where was the slave who was assigned to do this work? You know, Jews never washed feet, except for their own feet. They, ne they never, ever washed someone else's feet. That's what slaves were for. And by the way, only the Gentile slaves wash feet. Now, of course we know that this work could always be done by women. Every lowly task can always be done by a woman. So what in heaven's name is Jesus doing, making himself the lowest person in the room? 
even equal to a woman or a Gentile slave? This kind of reminds me of the stories of Jesus' birth, how he came into the world, born in a stable, among the animals, in lowly position. So here is Jesus, the one his followers believe to be the Messiah. He gets up from the table, takes off his outer robe, which some scholars say they view this as laying down his life, taking off his earthly form. And then one by one, he washes the feet of his closest friends. Of course, Jesus knows what's coming. And in hindsight, so do we. But it's not at all clear that the disciples know that this is the last time they will be together before Jesus' gruesome, gruesome death. And so from Jesus' perspective, you might call this a goodbye party, or maybe even a wake. Saying goodbye is never easy, is it? Do you remember saying goodbye to a close friend as you were about to move far away? Or even as they permanently moved out of your life? What about saying goodbye to your parents as you left home? Or at the final goodbye at the time of their death? We can all think of moments like this, those awkward, silent goodbye moments. We all handle these times differently, right? Some of us just quickly say goodbye, turn and run out the door before the tears come, trying to give ourselves the opportunity to grieve our loss in private, right? Others hang around saying goodbye, like Juliet saying goodbye to Romeo. Parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say goodnight till it be morrow, knowing that the time of leaving has come, and yet not wanting this to be the very last moment, not wanting this to end. We want to hang on to it, to hang around a bit, to slow it down. So tonight, tonight, we experience Jesus, the consummate trainer, saying goodbye to his closest friends. Friends who've lived together, sharing everything in common for the past three years. Getting up from the table, taking off his outer garment, Jesus proceeds to leave his handprint, his physical touch individually on each disciple much like that jar of perfume left its scent in the house long after Jesus' death, Jesus leaves a lingering, experiential body memory on each of his disciples, even Peter, even Judas. Jesus touches, washes the feet of each of his disciples, ministering to each one individually, as he knows each one individually. And he washes their feet, and Jesus remembers their time together. And after the crucifixion, each disciple will have this intimate body memory of Jesus' caring, servant touch to hold on to. This is an intimate encounter. I don't know about you, but in my lifetime, very few people touch my feet. I may shake hands, I may pat someone on the arm, or give someone a hug, I may kiss someone on the cheek, but touch someone's feet? Rarely. Touching someone's feet is intimate. Jesus told Peter, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Unless we allow Jesus 
to come into our lives in an intimate way. We have no share with him. And while we don't usually think of Jesus this way, this evening reminds us that Jesus will take with him to the cross and beyond this intimate memory of his disciples as well. The disciples will be carried with Jesus beyond the grave and into eternity. Our relationship goes both ways. God loves us and we love God. After he'd washed their feet and put his robe on and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I've done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I've done to you. We can only give what we first received. First, we receive the cleansing, forgiving, healing touch of Jesus. And then we are able to give to others this same cleansing, forgiving, healing touch. Today I give to you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, the world will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Amen.